This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, but not one of my own. This is going to be a deck profile from a friend, follower, subscriber, fan, whatever you want to refer to him as, whatever he wants to refer to himself as as well. Alex, who is someone who I've met many times in person, a couple of times at least, and he has gotten first place at his OTS this past weekend with World Chalice, going 8-0 undefeated, only dropping a single game in the finals with his World Chalice deck that he says that he got a lot of information from myself on. So, he sent me his deck list and sent me a tournament report and asked if I wanted to uh, do something with it as far as covering it, and I said, yes, sure, absolutely. And he is also going to be putting up his own deck profile on his own channel, which I will have his channel linked in the description if you want to go check out his channel and uh, check out the video he's going to make where he may give a lot more insight for card choices as to why he played certain things and so on and so forth. So, without uh, with that out of the way, essentially, he played a 42-card World Chalice deck. He did not play Exodius because he said that he lent them out to his friend before the event and then didn't decide to play World Chalice until 4 a.m. before the event started because he did not want to play the Pendulum Mirror all day. So this was a last minute decision for him and he said that he just started watching my videos for combat tutorials and stuff to refresh his memory of things and then built a deck and went with it. So his deck list is 42 cards. He played three World Legacy World Chalice, three Lee the World Chalice Fairy, three Chosen by the World Chalice, two copies of Beckoned, just to be additional World Chalice names, additional normals, two copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon, only two Venuses in his deck because he wanted to, uh, in his own words, he said that he wanted to make his Ningirsu draws better and, you know, don't, drawing dead Venuses after you've already Venus comboed is something that he didn't want to uh, do a lot of and there's Transmodifies and there's Brilliant Fusion in the deck so you do have access into it via sending it to Grave Off Brilliant or Transmodifying uh, Lee away. So he felt that two was fine. At least he seems to think that two was fine. Uh, three Shine Balls to go with the Venuses. Three Gofu, because this really just extends your play. Only one Garnet, essentially, for the Brilliant Fusions in the form of one Gym Knight Lazuli. There's really no reason to be playing Gym Knight Garnet anymore, even though it does help some plays go forward. Uh, honestly, it's just outclassed by all the other Vanillas you're playing, like Shine Ball, Chosen, and Beckoned. Uh, but then he plays the two Kaijus, Radian and Gamma Seal, for the field spell plays. He plays an Archlord Christia in his main deck, which I'm personally not a huge fan of, but he claims that it worked very well for him. He says that it's not too good in the Magician matchup, uh, and it's definitely not good against Draco, uh, but against ABC and all those other things, which is where you know his locals is an area that he says plays a lot of ABC uh, and things like that. So Christia shines, really, in those sorts of matchups, and then also it's just, you know... An extra bit of damage you can throw on board as well, so there's that as well. But he played four hand traps in the form of Max C and Triple Ash Blossom. Played three of the field spell, essentially two Kyoto Waterfront and one Terraforming. Three copies of Brilliant Fusion, two Transmodifies, one World Legacy's Heart, one e Telly for the Chosen, one Soul Charge because it's broken, and two main deck Twin Twisters. And his extra deck had two Firewall Dragons in it, one Guy Saber the Virtual Knight, or uh, the Lightning Shadow actually. Uh, two copies of Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior, which he said that the second Ningirsu was the best decision that he made for the deck because he was going second all day. He lost every die roll that he says that he played, and that he was going second all day, and he was just OTKing people by sending cards to Grave with Ningirsu, summoning another Ningirsu, sending a card to Grave, uh, stuff like that. And he didn't want his Ningirsu getting banished by ABC, which again, I said that he says that his uh, locals and his local area has a lot of that, uh, so he didn't want to risk the one Ningirsu getting banished. Uh, two copies of Orum, two copies of Eeb, one Proxy Dragon, one Link Spider, Triple Imduk, and one Gym Knight Seraph Knight. Rounds out his extra deck. And then his side deck has two copies of Zaphion, the Time Lord, two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, three System Down, one, the well, the third copy of Twin Twister, one Mind Control, three Anti-Spell Fragrance, two Dimensional Barrier, and one Imperial Order. So, overall, I really like his deck list. Uh, he said that he didn't have Exodius because he lent him out to a friend, otherwise he would have played them, and he said that... Uh, that uh, th that's what he gets for lending out cards, essentially, the last minute choose to play the deck that he would play it in. Uh, but basically, this is a really nice deck. The, uh, the reason he did not play Rescue Rabbit uh, is because Ash Blossom absolutely is the killer of that card. Uh, and honestly, I can agree with that. Rescue Rabbit has come out of my list. Even though, on paper, I can justify for you so many reasons for why you should be playing Rescue Rabbit at 3 right now, 
um, then there, it just it comes down to the point of you have to put your opponent on having the Ash Blossom, and you would just rather not do that. You'd rather just play more cards like more World Chalice names to make your overall hands smoother and better with your Gofus and stuff like that. And also being able to have more World Chalice names in your hand means that you can actually do more things with your Link monsters, masking the effect of your World Legacy World Chalice going off so that you don't fall into Ash Blossom. Really, the only card in this deck that hard falls into Ash Blossom now is Transmodify, and so that card could be on the chopping block. It's been on the chopping block for me as well, but he says that he might be cutting this card as well uh, because he didn't really see it during the day. He was usually sending Venus off Brilliant Fusion, uh, but mainly like Transmodify is just really a high-risk, high-reward card that I don't know if we can really get behind anymore. But, so, for his tournament report, he played a five-round Swiss OTS, and they played out top eight. So, five rounds of Swiss plus three rounds of top cut. He went undefeated in all of them. He played against Spiral, a four Pendulum Magician, two Cosmo, and one uh, True Draco Invoked Spellbook. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a very interesting sweep of what he played against. But he played against four Pendulum Magicians uh, and one True Draco deck in the uh, span of his things. And he says he lost every single die roll, so I went second all day. I OTK'd every single one of them except for the finals, which ashed everything that he tried to do. But he still won that match, so got him. Uh, but he says he did not drop a single game until game two uh, against Pendulums, where he opened Omega Dweller and had an Ash Blossom, so he couldn't do much. Uh, and then game three, he says he just went first and extra linked and won. And the games lasted two turns max. The deck was super consistent. My hands were smooth and playable all day. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, what else? I'm looking through a long list of conversation we've had. Uh, I asked him if he had any problems with Masterpiece in the True Draco matchup, and he said, he, I didn't really struggle against the Masterpiece because my opponent didn't know much about the deck, so he was waiting for the Firewall Dragon to hit the board, uh, to, uh, to use the Masterpiece, like, summon on, you know, do the trap and all that sort of nonsense. Um, but Ninkirsu took care of it, he activated the effect and said no responses, and in resolution sent the master uh, sent, uh, sent the stuff to Grave, so he never had a chance to pop anything. Uh, so the lack of knowledge that his opponent had in the matchup was really what uh, got him to do some certain things. Uh, and people failing to understand chain links as well as as uh, masking all my important effects, as I say in the videos, as his words. Um, stuff like that. Uh, let's see... I do have to say that playing two Ningirsu was the best decision I made. Expect I expected lots of Paleo and ABC. Didn't want to lose the Ningirsu to Banishing effects. Uh, plus, I could throw the one into back row knowing that I have a second copy of Max Shore. Also, there weren't any Exodiuses because my friend was borrowing my copies. Couldn't find more copies at the shop. And I uh, literally put the deck together at 4 a.m. Didn't want to play the Pendulum Mirror all day. On the way to the shop, I rewatched all the combo videos you made to refresh my mind. They definitely paid off. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm re I'm just skimming through an entire conversation that we've had where I was asking him about stuff. Um, but, uh, let's see, not playing any solemn cards because of life gain, but the hand traps are just amazing because with Firewall Dragon, you're able to add them back to your hand. If you see them once, you've seen them multiple times if you're able to play the game. Uh, so, and also, you know, playing cards that you have to pay life for outside of Venus means you can't soul charge for five, so, so we're not doing that. Uh, but so he thinks that he's going to be cutting transmodify. Uh, definitely going to be putting in Exodiuses once he gets his hand back. Once he gets his hands back on them, uh, that he lent out, and uh, he said he's definitely cutting at least one transmodify for an Exodius uh, because the card wasn't that great for him, and that he's thinking about taking this deck to ARG Atlantic City, but is not too sure. But like I said, I'm going to be linking his channel in the description of this video if you want to go check that out and uh, see any more reasonings he might be giving for giving uh, for cards and stuff like that. And if you do well at an OTS, at a regional or whatever, and you have an interesting deck, or if you just have a deck that you want to uh, send me a deck list or a, a uh, report for your event or whatever, then definitely send it to my Facebook fan page. I would love to uh, start covering some of this stuff. Because getting a deck profile put on a channel, especially a channel that you like, um, and having somebody talk about like the success you had is definitely a good feeling, I know from experience. It's definitely something that sort of like immortalizes part of what you did in the game, so I can really respect like wanting to have something put out there for you. But anyway, like I said, check out the link in the description to Alex's channel if you want to see his deck profile and see potentially more reasonings and stuff like that. I've definitely got some uh, some tweaks of my own World Chalice deck that I might do an updated deck profile for later on in the week, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. 
Like this video if you want to see more Wall Chalice videos and more videos in general. It helps out a lot. And subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh videos. I'd love to welcome you on board. But links as always are in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and help my ability to continue to create content into the future, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as it gets you access into monthly reward like giveaways like a box giveaway that I'm about to be doing in the coming days after some payments clear. And uh, as well as getting access into my private Discord server. It's definitely something if you're interested in any of those things, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on Patreon itself. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins. As well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know. And you have, as always, my eternal gratitude. But special thanks to Alex for sending this in to me through my fan page. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the report. Thanks for the deck list and all that sort of stuff. And I hope you have fun at ARG Atlantic City, which I will not be attending, unfortunately. But other than that, thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.